let us take any tooth uh, say the lower five and in the we will try to measure the length of the lower five its whole length in the uh, axi in the uh, um, uh, sagittal view you go here it will uh, it, uh, it will ch it tell you that this is the measure distance or d so you click on it and then you choose the highest point of the tooth uh, this is the buccal cusp over here then you click and you go down to the apex of the tooth okay now the length is 20.46 uh, distance from the uh, say we want to do an implant in in this region however we don't do implants in the uh, in the lower uh, uh, wisdom tooth but this is just for for reference I want to know the level from the uh, tip uh, from the alveolar crest down to the uh, uh, inferior dental canal. So what I will do, this is the alveolar crest over here. I'll just bring it in this direction, and then I want this, and this is the inferior dental canal. So what I do, I will just go to the measurement tool, and then I will click from the crest up to the high uh, of the um, uh, superior roof of the su uh, superior wall of the inferior dental canal, and I will see that this measurement is. 8.51 now if I want to measure the thickness of the mandible in this area okay then I will just enlarge this and then I will measure the uh, thickness over here from the buccal uh, pl uh, alveolar uh, plate to the lingual it will be 14.56 now if I want to measure the uh, uh, this is the inferior dental canal then I'll bring the uh, level of the alveolar crest again now this is dipping uh, because of the uh, presence of the, uh, the, the, the retromolar area then I'll just press uh, uh, measure from this uh, from the height up to the uh, floor see this is 14 but if you measure it from this direction it will be again 11.55 okay so uh, you can uh, you can also measure distances uh, in the uh, like you measure lesions suppose there is a lesion as we saw here this is the same patient uh, a lesion which is uh, uh, a polyp suspected polyp in the uh, maxillary sinus then I will just direct it to the uh, uh, bring the image uh, 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 on the uh, uh, sorry on the polyp over here okay so, and I will measure it in 3d I will choose the largest dimension in all of the three images so in the sagittal uh, plane the measurement is 20.06 by 16.07 okay this is in the sagittal plane now in the I see the measurement over here it is the same 1607 uh, and if I want to measure it in the uh, mediolateral dimension then it will be 15.11 uh, millimeters this is the measurement you see now here the measurement will be the same as we've done it because this is a medial lateral so the measurement is the same 15.11 15.11 uh, millimeters okay now if I want to measure it in an anterior posterior direction at its highest then it will be 22.25 uh, uh, millimeters so see the difference is here what we do usually when we measure lesions we measure the highest or the longest distances in the in the uh, in the measure in the of the lesion in the three view in the three planes either the axial uh, 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 sorry the axial the uh, coronal 
and the uh, sagittal. So you measure them in the three. You take the largest three measurements in three planes and you just state them down so that if you want to write a report, for instance, uh, for the uh, for uh, uh, ENT uh, specialist, for instance. Okay. Uh, we can also not only measure this, we can measure multiple distances. Suppose you want to measure more than one distance, uh, like uh, uh, let us say I want to measure the whole, uh, the the, uh, the uh, size of the uh, of the of the uh, of the maxillary sinus. Let me take the largest dimension so that I will show you the multi-measurement how it works. I want to measure the maxillary sinus, right maxillary sinus in its largest dimension. So what I will do, I'll go to the other measurement tool which is the uh, measure along path. So what I click on it and then I will measure over here as you can see. So the total diameter of the uh, of the maxillary sinus is uh, uh, one. It's one zero seven, so it's around eleven centimeters. So this is a multi measurement tool. What uh, what what this does actually is that instead of measuring with the single rule, uh, ruler, I measure and then I click again and measure and clicking. Again, this actually tells uh, the uh, uh, saves you the time, so it does multi measurements. And then, once you double click, once you're uh, done, you double click. It gives you the whole measurement that you uh, that you. Uh, uh, it's a sum of all the me measurements that you have done. You can also measure angles. Let us. Let's say we wa I want to measure the angle over here uh, at the uh, floor of the maxillary sinus. Then I will go to I will go to the measuring tool, which is the measuring angle. This is the angle that I want to measure. Then I click here, one, two. It gives me the angle. This is 57.5 degrees. If I want to measure like the uh, palate, if I want to see if it's a deep pellet or a shallow pellet, I'll go again here, click in the an uh, angle, 1, 2. So this is 156.4. Okay, so this is another measuring tool. Also, you have the uh, uh, show gray value. Actually, this the gray value, This is, it tells you the, uh, or it, it, it calculates the number of pixels which are present in the uh, uh, on the monitor of the screen. It, it gives you an idea about the radio opacity or radio lucency of a structure. Uh, this is more or less, it's not a, um, it's not a, a substitute for the Hounsfield unit for measurement of the bond density. Actually, it just gives you an idea of uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, hardness uh, or the calcification of a tissue against or radio opacity against radio lucency. For instance, if I bring it to the uh, the measurement tool on the uh, uh, maxillary sinus, which is a complete supposedly it's a completely radio lucent area, the uh, uh, gray value here is uh, uh, 645. But if I go to the say for the zygomatic uh, process of the maxilla it's 1863 if I go to the enamel for instance the number increases you know that enamel is the hardest tissue in the uh, uh, in the body so it's 2638 this is the number of pixels which are present if I go to the air which is present between the tongue uh, it's 655 which is almost similar to the uh, shadow of the uh, uh, or the the uh, uh, grayness uh, 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 of the uh, maxillary sinus. If you go to the inferior concha, it is one one six two, 
which is less than definitely than the buccal bone which is 2060 and it is less than the uh, uh, spongy bone which is present uh, uh, in the mandible which is 1445 so the uh, uh, the uh, gray value it shows the gray value of these structures but again uh, this is just to, for us to see, let me give you another example about the gray value. I'll just delete these measurements so that it will not, these are the angle measurements and uh, uh, the length measurements. I want to see uh, the density, radiographic density in an implant site, for instance, in this area. I will just again delete this measurement. I want to see the uh, uh, radiographic density in this area okay so is it the bone is the bone dense enough so that I can implant uh, a, a place an implant here so I will go to the gray value and I will measure it just keep clicking on the left it's 1400 if I compare it to another area like the uh, submandibular gland for see it's 1129 this is more because the uh, the, ca ca the the b bone trabecules in this area are more than what is present in the uh, in the submandibular uh, gland fossa. If you I put it on an amalgam filling, the number jumps to 4,092 compared to the enamel, which is 2,600. So this is again the measurement tool that I can uh, uh, use to uh, tell me an idea about the uh, radiographic bone density or the difference in the radiographic densities between so air shadows, soft tissues, teeth and <coughs> other structures.